Hollywood. This is the uh, first uh, rockabilly edition of it. I guess I'm on that camera. Uh, we got a bunch of real special guests in today. <laughs> we got uh, this friend from India. He's got a little black dot on his forehead, but now he's got a white one. It's Billy Zoom. Billy, it's good to see you. Hi, Art. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's, it's always <laughs> a pleasure to be with you. I try and do it every 10 years. Nice shoes. Right. Thank you. Uh, next to him, we got Brian Setzer. Brian? How you doing? Good to see you. You living in Hollywood now? Mm hmm. Cool. You living in Hollywood? Me? Yeah. Almost. Almost. I'm Hollywood, not sure. Hollywood adjacent. They call I'm on the boundary. Adjacent. I don't know. Yeah. Next to him, James Enfelt. How's it going, Art? James, it's good to see you. Uh, okay, wait. Actually, you got some news, but it's in the future, like in September, isn't it? Uh, I do. Yeah, <laughs> right. What is that? What's oh, the yeah. TV show? The TV show you um, on? I'll be on a TV show called Private Eye, uh -huh. which is going to be on Channel Four. It's a detective series where I I play a rockabilly singer. Wow. Out great? of character, that's good. Yeah, it was a, it was a stretch, but we, we pulled it off. So it's a big thing, isn't it, the private eye show? I mean, it's like yeah, it's 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 the same people that did Miami Vice um, are doing this one, and they've already sold like I guess seven shows. So it's gonna it's not only gonna be a pilot, it's, it's gonna be a. Is everything gonna be pink and green? <laughs> Any pink and green? Yeah, because Miami Vice. Oh, I don't know. Pink and black. It's set in '56. Yeah, that's right. Jeez. That's what I want. All right, so uh, Billy, your big new news is that you're going to be working with the Blasters, right? You're going to be well, that's some of my big new news, yeah. Well, that's some of the big We're going, news. We're uh, leaving for Europe on June 23rd, I think. Cool. For two weeks. And, um, wait, there's something else. Now, you know, I, I wrote an event when you had on the, on the L.A. Rockabilly album when you had that one cut on it. Uh, I wrote that you played with Vincent one, a couple times, but I don't even know what the story was on that. You played with Gene Vincent like in 69 or 70 or something like that? 70, when did he die? 71? 71, eh? 71, I think. Yeah. Up to about two months before he died. So you were doing the clubs around LA with him, or recording? Or yeah, no, as far as far north as Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we had one uh, one weekend in Sacramento, huh. and we're in Orange <coughs> County, and just you know, there wasn't a whole lot happening there. Yeah, right. 1971, was a great year for music. Uh, Brian, now you were with the Stray Cats, and then you weren't, and then you were, and now you're not right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, way. I mean, we split up in 84, and yeah. then we got together and did a benefit for L.A. Uh, free Clinic. Uh -huh. There was just one show, and we did an album as well, kind of a five-day drunken album. Mm -hmm. That is probably, some of the, has some really good stuff on it, actually. Mm -hmm. And you just finished doing another one now, a solo? I just finished another one, my own record. Uh -huh. And I guess I played on records here and there. I did the Honey Drippers thing. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, that was really good, that thing on Saturday Night Live. I yeah, thought. yeah, that was real good. That was a big shot because that wasn't announced. I mean, all of a sudden, you're just up there with, uh, yeah. with Plant. Plant, wasn't it? Robert Plant, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, okay. That's yeah, his right. name. Yeah. <laughs> good art, arts trivia. <laughs> well, actually, we were talking about... guy's name? What is that big? Yeah, he's a big Zeppelin fan. You know, did you ever talk to him of all the Elvis songs? There's, there's quite a few good Elvis songs. I mean, why is everybody beating Little Sister to death? I mean, it's not that great. A I've got one that someone should do. That? Uh, Marie's the name of his latest flame. It's the flip side, wasn't it? Flip side of... No. Uh, yeah, Little Sister, I think it was. Is it flip side of Little Sister? Yeah. yeah. It's, on, it's on the frolic room they've got on the B side. Yeah, that's, it's a, that's a regular issue. Yeah, I think it's much better. I mean, Little Sister, everybody's doing it to death. Because you can play that lead with one finger. Oh, is that what? <laughs> 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 I, I, uh, I wanted to say, I'll go on record as saying I'm a longtime Stray Cat supporter. I mean, it was a very difficult uh, line for me to hold during 82 and 83 when I was working with the Blasters. Huh. But uh, uh, you can ask them. I was saying, no, they're great. I saw, because I saw you guys in 1980 at the, a club in Amityville, New York, when it was Brian and the Tomcats. Mm -hmm. And it was really neat. Mm, yeah, that was fun. There really is an Amityville? There's an yeah. Amityville horror. Yeah? Is that your hometown? <laughs> Yeah, my hometown is next to that. It's called Massapequa. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're from Massapequa? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> what a small world. Oh. Yeah, Billy's from Massapequa Park. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, Massapequa Heights. Park bench. Yeah. Yeah. Massapequa Heights, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Billy, what's the first record you it's ever the old, bought? The old or stolen. What? Your, what was the first record you ever bought? First record I ever bought? Yeah. I don't remember. Okay, that's a good answer. Uh, no, I mean, because most people remember it pretty well. I mean, uh, I bought too much by Elvis after I, I saw bought, it. I uh, bought, I don't know, I remember breaking all my mother's son records one gradually. 
trying to play them when I was a kid because they were 78s. Your mother had Sun Records? Yeah, she had all the Presley stuff and everything. I broke them all. <laughs> I mean, not intentionally. I didn't intentionally throw them on the floor or anything. I just, you know, how 78s and kids are. Or 78s and anybody for that matter. Yeah. Mm. And that was back in the Quad Cities, wasn't it? Yeah, more or less. Is that where, I mean, you're from the Rock Island, Moline, Illinois? Sort of, yeah. That general area. The general area. I used to drive through there all the time, driving. What is that, 60? That's, not that's, a, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> drive through and keep going. Uh, Brian, what's the first record you ever bought? Um, I bought the, I guess it was Introducing or, or, or Meet the Beatles uh -huh. uh, on the DJ label. Did you get the one? Did you get the one with the right titles on the jacket or the wrong titles on the jacket? Jeez, I don't remember. I mean, it was you remember like there was six or seven years. You know how they used to have fourteen on the English ones, and they'd leave two off, and they left it was, it two was off the on VJ the record, label. and another two yeah. off on the jacket. VJ label would be the them. import, wouldn't it? No, but VJ was American, but they Ameri but they had some oh. with the labels printed wrong with the wrong song titles. I probably wouldn't on. have known. I played a hole through the thing. <laughs> they, Jack, they come with a hole through the thing. The first oh, they, oh, they come with that one hole. Through. Yeah. Oh, cutting in on my time. Yeah, right. What's, what's the first record you ever bought? Uh, first record? I don't know. I don't know what the first record I ever bought was. But you came from a rock and roll household, didn't you? Well, yeah, because my dad had all the records that I wanted to listen to anyways. Yeah. So didn't, I didn't really have to buy any. Now, that's a good philosophy. You already had records. What the hell do you need new records for? That's, that's pretty right. much the way I think of things, too. <laughs> I mean, you got all those Elvis records. What else do you need? Exactly. Well, we had a lot of different stuff. Actually, we had a lot of Lefty Frizzell records. My dad was really heavy in the Lefty But your dad was from Holland, right? Right. And Holland. Saginaw, Holland. <laughs> Holland, uh, But did he pick up the records there with a bunch of Dutch imports? Or he? Um, actually, we had a lot of um, Dutch rockabilly albums from people that were covering those things. Oh. You know, um, I think the only thing he brought over here was a Pat Boone record with him. But I actually got all his Elvis records over here. In fact, I've still got the original ones at home, and he got them at Savon's because uh -huh. we still got the price on it. It's like. Uh, Elvis, like his first, his first album was like '98 or something, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, it's funny because I looked on it and, and it's a save on right in the corner. It's look at the price tag on it, amazing. It's three ninety eight. I'm so mad. Uh, yeah, it was it was three ninety eight for stereo, two ninety four. Three ninety eight for stereo. Uh, 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 for yeah. Yeah. For stereo. Uh -huh. All right, I know you've been listening to rock and roll forever since you were a kid, as I have. Now, Brian, I wanted to ask you, I know before the Stray Cats, you were in some other kind of band, a heavy yeah. pop band. The Bloodless Pharaohs. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you were suddenly, how did, what happened? Did you change your mind one day? <coughs> you couldn't be following a popular trend because there was no trend to this music at all. Right, especially on Long Island. I mean, yeah. there was n nobody knew what the word rockabilly meant. Yeah. Uh, well, we used to cut class and take the train into Manhattan and watch the girls during the day, and look at guitars on 48th Street. And then at night, we'd go to Max's Kansas City or CBGB's. Mm -hmm. And we were like 16, but they let us in. So I heard Bebop Alula on the jukebox at Max's. I just like, jumped back through the, like 20 feet backwards. Wow, you know, I didn't know what it was. But it just really sent me, you know. And uh, that's how I kind of discovered it. And I kind of asked people what it was, you know who, this guy, Gene Vincent, or Eddie Cochran, is, I guess about 15, 16. Nobody knew who they were. Even my folks didn't know. I thought I was on Mars. And then I saw a, 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 a melody maker, an English paper, with some English kid with a big quiff. And I go, wow, somebody else knows what it is. And that's how I discovered it. So wait, that, when did you form the band? What year, 80? Um, 79? 78, 79, yeah. yeah. Uh, I started off playing with a rhythm box. Wow. And a folk guitar in a club, <coughs> and uh, there'd be a pool table, and people would walk by me to get to the bathroom and knock the mic in my lip, <laughs> get a bloody lip. And I started off playing with a, a rhythm machine, you know. So, I, mean, I couldn't you, afford a drummer. So, did, how did you guys make the trip, uh, the transference to England? Because I mean, you're playing Long Island, people like it. That's nice, but it wasn't any big deal around New York, right? For yeah, we played New York, Connecticut, Virginia, around there, and mm -hmm. we uh, played, you know, and. Uh, I met this guy in Philadelphia who was an English teddy boy. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know what a teddy boy was. And he just kept saying to us, wow, you know, you've seen the cover of the Melody Maker. They, they love American rock and roll there. And you guys are it. And if you ever came to England, you'd be big. So, you know, we just kind of saved up a lot of money and kept thinking we weren't getting anywhere here. Mm -hmm. Just kept thinking about it. And we'd come out here once or twice, too. But oh, really? Nothing. Brian and Tomcats played here? I came out with my brother, and I, I met up with Levi. Uh -huh. We kind of played together and got some stuff going and nothing. There was really no interest. And then 
we went over to England with this sort of teddy boy, this English guy. And I guess it took about all of two months, and we were... I guess so, yeah. Yeah, because I was looking at the English trades, reading about the Stray Cats, and I went, what is this? It looks like, it looks like those guys I saw on Long Island. Why did you change your name? Brian the Tomcat. Uh, I, I guess Tomcats we thought was a little hack. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I don't really recall why. We just said Lee thought up Stray Cats. Yeah. And uh, soon everyone, I mean, we were, we were wearing, you know, like cowboy shirts, cut off the sleeves, and mm -hmm. we had a sort of look we created. Uh, we borrowed most of the stuff, of course, from Rockabilly stuff, but we had created our own things as well. And all the skinheads were growing quiffs, and all the punks were cutting their hair. And was, what the hell's going on here? So I guess we really started something. You didn't have to do that movie, huh? The, what the Stardust do? That'll be the day. You know, no, no, I, I hadn't seen that movie. There's a band called the Stray Cats in a movie, uh, Stardust Blues, is it? No, Stardust, Stardust is one of them. They'll be the day was the first one, yeah. and Stardust was the second yeah, one. Yeah, but I mean, it's not a name so uncommon that you would never think of it. You know, so. <laughs> But actually, I can't think of none from the 50s, can you? Is there any stray cats at all? I don't think so. Stray cats, no. Yeah. Bobcats and hipcats and yeah. wildcats. <laughs> yeah, there was every other cat, man. So you, actually, you were over there when, uh, when it started happening over here in 82. When the, when the, actually, I think crested in 82 or 83 in L.A. Mm -hmm. when it was quite... I mean, I remember May Company had a rockabilly clothing department for a while. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it was, uh, so did Macy's. <laughs> Back in New York, yeah. it was like, well, it's time to end this band. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, all right, so your new stuff that you're working on, uh, I mean, there's elements of rockabilly and there just none at all, or mm. what, what's the deal? I mean, I have No, heard. there's quite a lot of rockabilly and yeah? rock and roll. Um, I, I didn't use a stand-up bass on it, mm -hmm. although I wanted to get this cat over here to play his oh, Russell. Tunes. Yeah. Russell, yeah. yeah. I couldn't find him. But it's kind of, uh, it's... I don't can't describe it. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what I try to think of it is, is, is if Gene Vincent had ever heard the Sex Pistols, that's what it sounds like. Okay. At least that's what I had in mind when I was cutting it. Yeah. All right, well, uh, James, let's see, we were on TV, uh, you were coming TV in the fall. You were in the fabulous movie, Roadhouse. That's right. Roadhouse 66, go out and rent it at your nearest uh, video store. Did you, you ever see this, Brian? Mm -mm. Did you see Roadhouse? I'm in it for five seconds, too. That's right. In what we call a reaction shot. I go, <laughs> like this, for, uh, you know, while, while, some, while you're singing? Same reaction I had. <laughs> <laughs> while you're singing? While well, I'm singing. Oh, that's right. So that had a lot of famous people in it. Uh, Willem Dafoe, uh, Judge Reinhold, James Infield. I mean, you're the next. It's obvious. It's consecutive. Yeah. yeah. It always runs in threes. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I had an acting career for a while. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, 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 I was in King Kong. I ran. Is that right? Yeah. I, I ran. ran. King Kong, we broke loose. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I was in the background in a commercial. I can't remember what for. Uh, I um, I was in some uh, some weird Christian movie too that Billy Graham put up the money for, and I stood on a hilltop and held a guitar in the background. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll keep my eye on my gospel videos then, see if I can That's find right. it. Um, one thing about you know you were around running from King, from King Kong. I was the biggie though. Running, yeah. You know, breaks loose and everybody runs. <laughs> <laughs> Billy was around uh, 15 years ago or so when uh, me and Ronnie Weiser and a few other guys were running around to every rock and roll show right. in L.A., sort of maniacally supporting any kind of rocker like Jerry Lee or Carl Perkins or like that. And uh, I used to come by after third grade class and yeah, right, hang yeah, out yeah, with you yeah, guys. You were yeah. just about 11 years old, but yeah. you were yeah, uh, third grade 11. an active supporter of the rockabilly scene. But then, like, so you joined X when, in 78 or 79? When did they start? We started X in uh, 77, yeah. Mar March of 77, officially. And uh, there was a transition for you because you'd been playing almost exclusively rockabilly up till then, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the, for the same 123 people every every week <laughs> for three years. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with the blasters. <coughs> Uh, I don't mean that bad. Well, thanks, Art. Yeah. Uh. No, I, I could be worse. I could say good luck to the Blasters. But, you know, I mean, it'll be fun. James, I was asking you about that song. James played last night at the Club Lingerie along with the uh, Kingpins and the uh, Rouser, Rousers. Thank you. And uh, the one song you did, I wanted you to do a song that you didn't do last night, which is your brother's other song. Yeah, Turn Around. Could you try that for me? You want me to sing it for you? Yeah. Sure. In fact, what's this called? It's called Turn Around. It's uh, actually on my brother's gravestone. He's, I, when I had it made, I had some of the notes from the song engraved right on the stone. And this song? Yeah. Uh, we should mention, I guess, if you don't know, that uh, James' brother Ricky was uh, Ricky Nelson's drummer, and he died in the plane crash about a year and a half ago. <laughs> Don't 
Don't give up when things are looking Gig. <laughs> okay. uh, Bill, why don't you show them your pride and joy? I think the people on the TV line would love to see you your pride and joy. For it? I think they're ready for it. Really Where do we go for a close up? Where do you see this thing? thing? It's amazing. It's his pride and joy. No, I'm not going to show them that one. <laughs> Where do we get a close up? Oh, this girl. Has this girl? <laughs> Billy's pride and joy. <laughs> you ever seen anything like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> It was really something. I don't blame you for carrying that around. Mm. Listen, I heard you saying a little earlier, uh, Brian, that, uh, that you brought an Indian. You know, slavery has been abolished for uh, hundreds of years now. Yeah. Uh, what, is this, what is this Indian you bought? It's a 38. A 48. Oh, 48. Yeah, 48. I, 48 Indian, yeah. Well, I've had a 53 Harley since I was about 18. And uh, it's a good bike. It, it's it's kind of like a, a heavy radical custom. It's not like a stock 53. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's purple and crazy looking, but uh, I just got a stock 48 Indian Chief, some some guy in Cleveland, Ohio, and it's you know, it's a flathead. It kicks every that, star. Are there, that, are there that few Indians? 127 pounds. I can't be kicking those panheads over too easy. <laughs> are there so. that few Indians around? You got to go to Cleveland to get one. I mean, uh, good ones, ones ones that have been restored right with with old parts that haven't been messed with, you know, <laughs> because people chopped them up in the 60s and extended the front end. Yeah. Yeah, Cleveland Indians and yeah. <laughs> that's what you class. got actually. That's you yeah. got the Cleveland Indian. <coughs> Indian. That's right. It's a beauty. <laughs> is there anything you guys could? Uh, we all have guitars. Is there anything we could? No, work we don't. Out? I think we could work out. Possibly? No jazz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll no. sing then. Yeah, we could. Yeah, why don't you sing, Art? <laughs> yeah, right. Didn't you say you've always l wanted to yeah, do blue suede shoes on this show? Yeah, I always have, but uh, not. And you today. wanted three guitar players back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard something about that. We all want purple haze, right? Here, we slip some in the water. <laughs> Let's try something. What? Well, what's, what's real obvious? <laughs> we don't want to be too obvious. I was thinking something about Perkins. I mean, uh, yeah, Bob and Blue. Okay. Yeah. All right, three part harmony. That's right. All right, you got the high part. <laughs> Billy always wants to get the easy part. <laughs> the easy part. All right. What are we doing? Uh, blue suede shoes is in my mind. <laughs> All my friends are bopping the blues and it must be going round. All my friends are bopping the blues and it must be going round. I love you, baby. I must be going round. Come on, Brian. Well, I can't but be the man. I ain't feeling no pain. Baby, I'm 
just be real down. to follow Rock This Town? Uh, well, how many chords is this well, guy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It's got too many chords in it. Oh, I don't care. No, no, I'm just asking you. Sure, whatever you want to do. Well, Brian, I'd like to hear you. See if these guys can follow it. Want to try Rock This Town? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, see. I want to do something everybody knows. Okay. Everybody knows. Too many chords in that one for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows that one. Plus, you know, yeah. not going to get publishing off of this uh, TV show. Oh, right, we'll do it. Let's do it. Let's. Good Rock in the Night or something. Good Rock in the Night? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to start it? Yeah. I don't know. Nobody wants to sing that this morning. Like, hey, the new. Oh. Hey, it's Good Rock in the Night.
it sounded great in here. I hope it sounded yeah. as good out there. Oh. Um, I think we're probably just going to go out. We got one minute. Well, you could, got them all excited. Now. Yeah. <laughs> can you do? Can you, uh, I just want to go out on a song. So is there anything slow we can do? Bill, you're out of tune. Uh, I know. <laughs> Brad, you don't want to do you got any straight cat song you think of just to go out? Those out. guys, yeah. yeah. Right. Those guys. And yeah, we'll just fade on that and say goodnight. And we'll, you can just do the straight cat songs, and me and Billy will fake it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's see ones I remember. Um, no, I never liked that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's all right. let's. Uh, um, all right. What are you gonna do? Me. Yeah. Whiskey on the rocks, baby. Change of a dollar for the jukebox. I put a quarter right into that can. All it played was this to me. Come on, bring a bag. Get out of here right away. They want to rock this town. Rock it inside out. We want to rock to this town. They go scream and shout. But it's a rock, 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 man.